For the next few days, we're going to be trying jiotaku. It's a Japanese form of printmaking. Jio meaning fish and taku meaning rubbing. So people take actual fish and use them for printmaking. This form of printmaking originated in the 19th century by fishermen who wanted to record their daily catches. They would often keep paper and ink and brushes on their boats so that they could take these prints before selling or eating the fish. We'll start by creating jelly plate prints to make a nice background for our fish prints. You are going to have a variety of textured items such as bubble wrap, yarn, cardboard, we'll have stencils, brushes, sponges, and you can use these items to create textured looking papers. Start by squeezing out a little bit of acrylic paint directly onto the jelly plate, and then you'll use a brayer to spread it out evenly across the entire plate. Once it's spread out, you're going to take a piece of printing paper, place it on top, rub it gently with your hand, and remove. You'll still have a little bit of paint left on the jelly plate, so you can take one more print before moving on to your next layer. So when you add the paper this time, you might want to rub a little bit harder, and we call this one your ghost print. It's the ghost or after image that was left. Now we're going to add another layer of paint. So choose a different color, go ahead and roll it out with the brayer, and you're going to use the same papers to create another layer. I'm choosing to add this netting on top of the jelly plate this time before I press down my paper. So press down and whatever areas the paint is still showing on will show up on your paper. You'll still have enough leftover paint to do your other print. You'll always be working on the two prints. One will be the original and one will be the ghost print. Again, you can go ahead and add another color. If you need to wash off your brayer with a washcloth, feel free. And then choose one other form of texture to add. Right now, I'm pressing in some lines with cardboard. And I'm also going to drape some yarn over top of my jelly plate. And I'm going to leave that there for this print. For this ghost print, I'm actually going to remove the yarn so that I can get more of that paint onto my paper. For this process, make sure you're working fast so the paint doesn't dry before you're printing. I'd like to show you now some other techniques you can use. Remember, your first layer of paint will always just be that basic flat layer, and then you'll add on your textures for your additional uh, layers. So now, I'm going to show you how you can use the bubble wrap. If you put on a layer of paint and then press the bubbles into the paint gently, when you remove the bubble wrap, you will have removed some dots of paint. So this makes a really neat texture when you print it. Another item you can play around with are stencils. For this one, I'm actually going to squeeze paint on top of the stencil and spread it out. And then I'll remove the stencil, the plastic stencil, before I do this print. If the brayer isn't letting you get into all the nooks and crannies, you can also use a sponge to spread out the paint. Again, remember, don't waste that leftover paint on the jelly plate. I'm going to add just a little bit more paint with a sponge, and then I'm going to use what's left for my ghost print. I also wanted to point out that some of the colors, such as this yellow, do not show up well on top of other colors, and you'll see that in a moment. 
This is a great one for your base, your first layer, but for additional layers, it doesn't show up great. Here's another technique you can use using a paintbrush to put in texture. And again, you'll see in a moment when I lift this up, you can barely see the texture because this yellow just kind of fades in. But I'm going to go ahead and take my original print and the ghost print. So here's all the prints that I created. You will only be creating two, your original and your ghost print, but here's all the different techniques and kind of what they look like with the finished backgrounds. And now it's time to print your fish. I have four different options of fish, but instead of using real fish, I actually have these rubber replicas we're gonna use. Take a little bit of black printing ink and a paintbrush and you're gonna spread the ink in a thin layer in all those nooks and crannies along your fish. Please don't apply the paint too thick, otherwise your print won't turn out. You'll also wanna make sure you're doing this over newspaper. And then before you print, you are going to carefully put your fish on a clean surface before you print on your background papers. So I'm gonna take one of my backgrounds and I'm going to place my paper right over the fish. This will wrinkle up your paper a little bit, but you're going to smooth over, see if you can feel all the fins, all the details of the fish with your fingers as you rub the back of your paper. Once you know you've touched the entire surface, go ahead and peel back your paper and admire your finished print. And as you can see, I still had plenty of ink left, so someone else can use that to print again. And I was actually able to print three times without reapplying any ink. Each print will be just a little bit lighter, but that's okay. And here are my finished prints. As you can see, with each print, the ink does get a little bit lighter. So let's talk about rules for this process. Number one, I don't want you to be wasteful. You don't need to use a ton of paint on the jelly plates. Um, you also need to be gentle with them. I shouldn't see anyone like poking or picking at them. We're not popping the bubble wrap or tearing up the fabric. Just make sure that you are being courteous of all of our materials. I also need you to be in control of your body and in control of your voice during this time. That means no running around the room, even if you're excited to go get paint or supplies. Make sure you're using walking feet, quiet voices, and stay at your table. We're not wandering around the room. Because we have limited supplies, we will be taking turns for this project. You'll be working with a small group, and if it's not your turn to be creating your prints, you are going to be helping. So you're watching, if the person printing needs something, maybe they say, hey, can you please clean my brayer for me? Or could you go get me some blue paint? You are being helpful, watching them, reminding them of the rules. Oh, remember, you get to do three layers of paint, so you've only done two. Or oh, remember, you're supposed to take away the stencil. Give them reminders and be helpful, but don't be pushy or telling them to hurry up because you just want your turn. Work as a team to make sure everyone gets a turn to print. And finally, don't forget your name. We'll be working on this project for a few days, so we need to be able to pass back your papers and easily find your name. I like to put my name somewhere along this white border, but you could also put it on the back. 